Welcome back to our minute to minute analysis of Matrix Reloaded. In the previous video, we explained the meaning behind a license plate and a graffiti on the wall, both pointing to the transformation of Agent Smith and a possible reference to the architect. Today, we are going to be introduced to the new agents of the Matrix and how effective they are against the One. Welcome to Matrix Explained. We begin with something very strong hitting the metal door. It bursts open, revealing three unfamiliar faces. They are agents, but they are much different from Smith and the other agents from the original Matrix. These new agents are larger in size. So what happened to the first agents that Neo fought before? I guess we will find out later. Neo greets his new friends. It's him, the anomaly. Do we proceed? Yes, he is still only human. Yet another plot revelation spoiled at the beginning of the movie that nobody noticed watching the film for the first time. Neo being called the Anomaly. There are many more moments of foreshadowing leading up to Neo's encounter with the architect. Neo doesn't question what the agents meant about him being this anomaly. He, like the audience, wasn't paying attention to the small details. They were just waiting for the fighting to begin. But the most important detail here is that these agents are informed of what Neo is. Agent Smith and his partners were not. To them, he was just another red pill. Neither they nor Neo knew anything about the anomaly's code or that Neo was carrying it. Regardless, Neo was still only human. The first upgrade agent attacks Neo, and to Neo's surprise, the agent is more formidable. Upgrades. Despite the agent's upgrades endowed by the architect, they were still unable to beat Neo. Neo kicks one of them towards a streetlight post. At the top of the post, you can read the name of the manufacturer, Darrow Industries. Why is that important? Well, Jeff Darrow was one of the key crew members of the Matrix production. He was the concept artist responsible for the film's storyboards. While this might seem like a cheeky way for the directors to pay the man respect for his work in the movies, this could be an easter egg connecting the Matrix to another classic sci-fi property. The video game Deus Ex, released in the year 2000, takes place in a dystopian future in the year 2052. Both it and the Matrix universe share many similarities, specifically Darrow Industries. In the video game, Darrow Industries is a company founded and owned by Hugh Darrow. Its primary focus is on research related to mechanical augmentations. Curiously, the game franchise is named Deus Ex, and the Matrix has a character named Deus Ex Machina. Could there be a connection? Maybe. After Neil was done with the agents, he begins to manipulate the Matrix and flies away like Superman. Once he flies away, Smith returns and he is talking to someone else. Is he talking to another agent? Well, yes and no. That one is expected? Yes. It's happening exactly as before. Well, not exactly. Smith knew that the agents can't stop Neo. Hence, he said that things were happening exactly as before. But this time, things are going to be a little different thanks to him and his newfound power. We then see Morpheus and Trinity driving away in their black Continental, license plate AA-034, AA being a reference to the most commonly used battery model in the world. Humans are batteries. We've already talked about this in previous videos. Morpheus contacts Link and asks him what happened. What happened back there, Link? I can't figure it out, sir. Agents just came out of nowhere. And then the code got all weird, encryption I've never seen. The odd encryption that Link was talking about was, of course, Smith. Smith no longer can be seen as Matrix code. He is now a corrupted code, something that no red pill, including Neo, has ever seen before. But before Link mentioned that the code got weird, he said that the agents appeared out of nowhere, which means that the upgrade agents just spawned in. They were instantly deployed by the system. But how did the upgrade agents know where Neo was? Well... Smith could have led them there on purpose. 
The system, or rather the architect, followed Smith's corrupted code, thinking that it was Neo. Smith planned for the one and the newly updated agents to fight so he could witness how strong Neo has become. Neo is flying high above the city. He speeds off towards the housing projects where the Oracle lives. He opens the door to her apartment, but no one is home. Where are you? Neo can't see the entire Matrix code. Flying over the city, he is searching for the Oracle, but her code is nowhere to be found. This means that the Oracle has left the simulation to another construct, or perhaps back to Machine City. Why did she disappear? Probably to increase Neo's despair as his nightmares of Trinity's death torments him every night. This we have already speculated on in previous videos. Next, Link is taking the Nebuchadnezzar home. Here we see how Zion Control operates. Link is communicating with a navigator who is talking to him from the construct. Interestingly, it seems that all of Zion's security is controlled from the construct. Nebuchadnezzar, this is Zion Control. Maintain present velocity and stand by. Roger that, Control. This is Zion Control, requesting immediate stand down of arms at Gate 3. We have the Nebuchadnezzar on approach. We then get our first look at the hangar for all hovercrafts, which will later become the epicenter of a massive battle. Mechanics are working on the ships, and soldiers in APUs are guarding the entrance. The Nebuchadnezzar docks, and Morpheus has some people waiting for him. Captain Mafuni? Captain Morpheus, are you here to escort me to the stockade, Captain? I'm just here to keep the peace. Commander Lock demands... <clears throat> ...requests your immediate counsel, sir. Link. Sir. I want the ship ready to go as soon as humanly possible. Understood, sir. Morpheus did disobey the direct orders of his superior Locke, but there is some friction between them. Trinity reveals to Neo the origin of Locke's annoyance with Morpheus. What is it between them? Morpheus and Locke? Niobe. Captain Niobe? She used to be with Morpheus. Now she's with Locke. And what happened? Morpheus went to the Oracle. After that, everything changed. Yeah, she can do that. Turns out that it was the Oracle's fault that Morpheus and Niobe broke up. As we mentioned in previous videos, the Oracle filling Morpheus' mind with prophecies and legends drove Niobe away. Niobe did not believe in fairy tales. She is a rational red pill and refused to follow the prophecy of an old woman. Once Morpheus is escorted out of the hangar, from afar, some kid calls Neo's name. Who is he? That's for next time. For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.